Hi, today's lesson is on the pentose phosphate pathway. The pentose phosphate pathway has two really important functions. The first is to produce reducing power in the form of NADPH for anabolic processes in the cell. And a really good example of an anabolic process in the cell that uses this type of, of reducing power is called fatty acid synthesis. And the second really important function of the pentose phosphate pathway is that it also produces five carbon sugars. Now these five carbon sugars or pentoses are used for nucleotide synthesis and also aromatic amino acid synthesis among other processes in the cell. Before I talk about the details of the pentose phosphate pathway, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the whole process. So the pentose phosphate pathway starts with a molecule called glucose 6-phosphate. Now you might recall that intermediate in biochemical pathways because it's actually a breakdown product of glycogen within cells. which is ultimately a store of glucose molecules. So in the pentose phosphate pathway, glucose 6-phosphate is ultimately oxidized to 3 and 6 carbon intermediates of glycolysis. Now I'm going to talk to you about the pentose phosphate pathway in more detail. Firstly, the location of the pathway. So if this is our cell, the pentose phosphate pathway occurs inside the cell in the cytosol or cytoplasm. The pentose phosphate pathway has two main phases. The first phase is an oxidative phase. And the second phase is a non-oxidative phase. In the very first step of the pentose phosphate pathway, our starting molecule, glucose 6-phosphate, is converted into a 5-carbon molecule called ribulose 5-phosphate. And it is in this very first step where we have two molecules of the reducing power called NADPH that are produced. So now that the pathway has produced the all important reducing power in the form of the molecule NADPH, in the oxidative phase, we now come to the non-oxidative phase. The non-oxidative phase of the pentose phosphate pathway catalyzes the interconversion of three, four, five, six, and seven carbon sugars in a series of non-oxidative reactions. 
So the five carbon sugars can be used for the synthesis of nucleotides and aromatic amino acids, as well as, as some other molecules in the cell. And when there are excess five carbon sugars, they can then be used for the interconversion into some intermediates of glycolysis. And they are the three and six carbon sugars called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. Now I'd like to give you an example of a context of the pentose phosphate pathway. So this particular diagram shows you the way in which the pentose phosphate pathway actually gives reducing power in the form of NADPH to the biological process of fatty acid synthesis, which is an anabolic pathway. So inside the cell, fatty acid synthesis actually requires the molecule citrate to transfer the building block of fatty acid synthesis into the cytoplasm. That building block is acetyl-CoA. For every one molecule of citrate that is transferred from inside the mitochondria into the cytosol to actually produce acetyl-CoA, one molecule of NADPH is produced. And that reducing power can be used directly in fatty acid synthesis. But for, there's only one molecule that's produced per citrate that's passed into the cytosol. So the remaining reducing power must come from somewhere else. And that is from here, which is the pentose phosphate pathway. So together, those two sources of NADPH are required to fuel the overall biosynthetic process of fatty acid synthesis. So now I'm going to ask you a question that helps you to integrate biochemical pathways, in this case the pentose phosphate pathway and fatty acid synthesis. So as we've just established, fatty acid synthesis actually requires NADPH to come from two separate sources. If we look at the production of the fatty acid stearic acid, which is 18 carbons long, we can see that it requires a total of 16 molecules of NADPH reducing power. So if one NADPH is produced every time an acetyl-CoA molecule is transported into the cytoplasm from the mitochondria, how many more NADPH molecules are then required to come from the pentose phosphate pathway?